All right, now we got four minutes. This one? No, that's the show notes that are my show slides. I emailed it to you a couple days ago. Oh, yeah. Well, I put it in the folder. This one, right? No, that's, uh... This isn't it? This is the PowerPoint you sent me. No.
Woo. All right. Is that, are we, is that it? That's, that's the end of the PowerPoint? No? Okay. There's more. All righty. Welcome, everybody, to Whistlekick Live Season 2, Episode 2, also known as the 14th episode we've ever done, or the second episode of Season 2. Thanks for joining us. As always, I want to give a big shout out to Gabe for all of his work. I, I point over here because he's on the laptop. This is how we monitor because we are... We are across time zones. Gabe does all this great stuff from Oregon, the beauty of the internet. I mean, we couldn't do this kind of stuff even just a few years ago. It's totally awesome. Really dig it. Um, first off, if you hear some background noise, that's a fan on the computer. The computer's been overheating a little bit today. And so I've got a, I've got a temperature, I've got a thermometer here I'm measuring. I taped it to a box. Um, so it's that or no show. So that's what we're doing. So thanks for joining us. Thanks for tolerating as we continue to figure this stuff out. This is all kind of experimental. Show me another show like this. There are plenty of people who do this stuff pre-recorded. There are people who do, you know, I'm going to do Zoom and just put it out over the internet. That's great. I love that stuff. But what we're trying to do here is bring you into the fold. We're trying to give you some some fun some conversations some discussion some entertainment some conversation in the facebook chat and we're experimenting with weird technical things like putting me in the mountains with blur and you can't see my headphones and it's and it's silly and you know what because martial arts is silly and if we take ourselves too seriously especially in 2020 we're gonna go insane so why not have some ridiculous fun and that's what we're here doing this evening. We're here to celebrate martial arts. We're here to celebrate whistle kick and just kind of have a good time. So I want to thank everybody for joining. Looks like we got a bunch of people in the chat. I'm seeing stuff going on. People watching as they as they drive home from work. And I know that I know I know who's saying that. Stacy's saying that. I know she's not behind the wheel, so she's she's en route to home. I see a lot of familiar faces and some names that I haven't seen before in the chat. So that's kind of fun. So thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, now, one thing I want to mention 
Oh, I forgot to grab a drink. Guess I'm gonna yawn. We'll get to a point where I'll run out. Grab grab something to drink. Um, so if you follow me on Facebook, if you're paying attention to the things that we got going on, we've got a, a pre-order for some sweatpants. Now, how am I showing you sweatpants if it's a pre-order? Uh, this is a pair of sweatpants that I've had for years. So way, way back, like two years, which in coronavirus times is like 100 years. When we started doing martial arts events, when we started setting up at tournaments, the first item that we did outside of our protective equipment that people really loved were these sweatpants. So they're comfy, they last, they have a drawstring, even though I tore it out of this one uh, because it ripped, you know, and you get drawstring ripped. Um, but it also has elastic waist, it has pockets, and it's not jogger style, right? It's an open bottom sweatpant. And you can get those. Uh, we're closing the, sh the orders on Monday morning. So you got a little up. Excuse me, a little less than a week. They're 45 bucks, including shipping. Shipping, tax, well, if you're in Vermont, you're, the system is going to make you pay for tax. But 45 bucks, shipping. Uh, there are kid sizes for $40. The timing of this is was was chosen. This might make a good gift. Uh, the only difference on the kids' ones is that they don't have pockets, unfortunately. So uh, comes in a few colors. Check them out. They're on the website. And uh, seriously, these are the best sweatpants you've ever had. I've got multiple pairs. My black pair is in the laundry because I pretty much, as soon as it's cool enough to wear them, I pretty much just alternate between the two. So I'm bummed I can't wear them because I'm talking to you and I had to show them. So get your sweatpants. Oh, man. It's like bedtime already. I'm just kidding. This is why they record those, those night shows, those uh, late night shows at like three in the afternoon. Because everybody's tired by the time they air. I bet Dave Letterman's in, was in bed by the time every episode of Dave Letterman aired. So what else we got, Gabe? What else is going on? Oh, guess the whistle kick product from the Amazon review. Bought my son a pair for karate. The quality for the price was unmatched from what I've seen the other kids use in his class. He uses them four times a week and they hold up very well. Let's see, a pair, so that that's not a helmet. It's got to be gloves or boots or shin guards or could be the Taekwondo hand guards or Taekwondo socks or semi-contact gloves. Um, it's karate, so it's probably not Taekwondo. It's probably not semi-contact. Uh, I'm going to guess it's, it's the foam gloves or the foam boots. What do we got? Oh, I was wrong. It's the it's the semi contact gloves, the pursuit gloves. Those are those are good gloves. We actually have so as you might imagine, right now, people are not buying a lot of protective equipment. We've got people buying some, not a lot, because in a lot of places, nobody's making contact with anyone. But we're selling some. And we are, I believe, completely out of those gloves. So I I'm in communication with the factory right now to say, hey, what's the smallest batch you can make? Because I don't want to order 500 pairs because it's going to take a long time to sell those right now. But um, looks like they're willing to do a smaller order. So I think we're going to be doing that. Uh, all that stuff, if, if anybody wants that stuff, yeah, we sometimes put it up at whistlekick.com, but really the best place to get it is Amazon because the price is the same. They deal with all the shipping and everything. And uh, yeah, that's, that's the way to do it. So check on Amazon. We have none of it in our warehouse right now. What we have left is at Amazon. So check that out. Next, for any martial art, what are your thoughts on... Oh, we're gonna, I'm going to have to go get something to drink. Let me do this one and then I'll run out. Gabe will switch to something. He'll, he'll provide some manner of entertainment. I'm speaking long so he can come up with a plan. This wasn't part of the game plan. For any martial art, what are your thoughts on training in uniform or in regular clothes? Well, I'm curious to see what people in the chat think. I think it's important. Now, I've said this before many, many times. A diverse martial artist is an effective martial artist, a better martial artist. And if you only know how to do your stuff, do what you do, wearing a gi or a jobok or some kind of martial arts uniform, and then you go to kick and you're in jeans and it feels different, you're wearing sneakers, how's that going to go? This is why a lot of, um, let's say, self-defense focused arts have people train in street clothes. It's one of the things that I actually, 
I don't want to say I agree with um, not having uniforms at all, but I will say that training in street clothes periodically is really, really important. Really um, makes it effective. You got that, Gabe? <laughs> you don't know? All right, let me see if I can grab it. I know where I know where you're going. Uh, what if we go here? Gabe's trying to show you the chat. No, not shares. Here we go. Comments. Come on, load comments. What's going on? It's not loading. It doesn't like us. There we go. All right. So, um, tell you what. Let's show this. Is this what you wanted to show, or did you have a plan? Richard's chiming in about what they do in Krav Maga. In Krav Maga, we had nights where we wore street clothes and trained in the concrete hallway, connecting the back of the shops. We were careful, but it was different from being in the normal clothes and setting. I, I, yes, yes. If you think, here's the thing. If you think that you're going to use what you know, you're going to use your training in sneakers and jeans, aka street clothes, and you've never trained in street clothes. You've never sparred in street clothes. Maybe it's time. You, you, there are so many variables that we can't control. Why not control the ones that we can? Right. I like how we've got the ton, kind of tunnel effect going through on that. Um, can we throw up a trivia question or something? Do we have something we can, we can do? We can give them like a 30 second timer while I go grab a glass of water. I don't know if they want to see comments. I feel like the comments without some kind of narration. Oh, no, it's not. No, not, not that. Not that. Okay, that's right. You did have that. Okay, I'll tell you what. Here's what we're going to do. I'm <laughs> I'm tempted to do what Saturday Night Live, uh, the, the uh, coffee talk and, and the host, all for Klempt. I'll give you a topic. Talk amongst yourselves, right? Any of you who get who remember that one? Um, all right. So here's what I want. I want you to think about. Here's the question. If you watch first cup, you're going to get it. What famous martial artist birthday is today? I'll be right back. All right. If you guessed Gichin Funakoshi, you were right. Funakoshi, founder of Shotokan. Today was his birthday. And I conducted an interview today with a Shotokan black belt. And I managed to work that into the conversation. And I think he thinks I'm the biggest martial arts nerd ever. Maybe not the biggest, but... I'm certainly pretty nerdy. All right. Now that I'm back and I'm pr prepared as I should have been, Gabe, what's next? <laughs> All right. If you, if you could go back to your most difficult time in your training, what would you tell yourself? Hmm. I think... So I've had a few moments. But the one that I, I'm, I'm thinking about right now was... I was probably 12, maybe 13, fairly small, you know, probably 115 pounds and probably the highest ranked kid in the kids class. So it was like a, a green belt, maybe not quite, but I was really struggling with being smaller than everyone and what being higher ranked meant 
at a time when I was just getting picked on at school constantly. Like I couldn't, I couldn't reconcile all of those things together. Here I was, I was in theory, I had some skill, but I didn't quite know how and when to apply it. And life was already chaotic and difficult because you know, you're 12 and it was a rough time. And, and there were some people, including my instructors, who really were patient with me and helped me get through it. So um, now we tried to do this last time. It didn't work so well, but it should work better this time. Uh, we've got some people who are going to come through on Zoom today. So I want to welcome Andrew, Andrew Adams, to the show. All right. Let's let him in. We're letting him in. Today. So I want to welcome Andrew. Andrew. He's in. Andrew, can you can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I think so. Let me start my video. <laughs> there we go. What's going on with that mask, buddy? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I have my mask on? Oh, hang on. I can take this off. Do you know why I can take this off? Because you're at home by yourself and there's no one. No, because my feet. computer has virus protection. <laughs> I thank you for the bonus humor segment. I didn't, we, that wasn't even in the contract. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Is the audio? Hey, Matt says they, they can hear you. Oh, thank God. We did it right. I did it Yay. right this time. Um, so for the audience, I don't know why I'm looking over here. The camera's here for the audience. The, the issue last time, was in the audio setting. So anybody who does anything with audio knows that when you click on a speaker, it disables the speaker, right? It mutes it. I mean, you, you, you work with music and sound and you know, you click that little speaker thing and you get burnt, you know, it, it goes away. Well, in the software that we use, it goes from gray, very, very small icon to gray, very, very small icon with white line through it that is the same color as the background. But yet, the little thing that shows what the, the level keeps going. Yep. That was it. That's all that we needed to do. <laughs> so, but now we know. Well, welcome. I, I, we've already spent an hour together today. Yeah, it was a, yeah, it was an hour we today. We recorded a pretty cool episode this morning. I'm excited for everyone to hear that later. We're not going to... I liked the way that you expressed it on Facebook. Your your bit of foreshadowing. Would you mind repeating that? Yeah, um, we recorded what has the potential to be one of the most controversial topics discussed in a martial arts podcast. Potential. Uh, maybe I'm being a little dramatic, and it was not whether Ameridote is <laughs> the most effective martial art because we all know that it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. But uh, I'm excited to have it come out and I'm excited to hear people's feedback and thoughts on it as well. I don't I don't remember when it's coming out. You would know that better than I. Thursday. This this week. It's supposed to come out Thursday. Oh, okay. Well there you go. Hopefully the video will be ready in time. I, I emailed Julius and said, Hey, we just recorded this one. Can this come out Thursday? So um do you want to know a fun fact about Master Ken? Um, I may already know it, but have, go have ahead. you listened to the Master Ken episode? I have, of okay. course. Right. I mean, I I got a private message from Master Ken this week. You did, you did, and 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 I watched it, and you posted it. It was it was great. It was a lot of fun. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Master Ken was on episode twenty something. Like it was way back. Uh, I was he pretty lucky that he said yes, and um, Master Ken and I had a crush on the same girl. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah, we we uh, we had a crush on the same girl. He dated her. I just admired oh. from afar. That's because of Meridote is far superior. But I will I will guess and I and I can't say this for sh for sure, but I'm pretty sure that she and I talk more now than than the two of them do. She's married, mm -hmm. has kids, wonderful person. It's not <laughs> it's not like that, but uh She's remained in Maine, and of course, Master Ken 
aka Matt Page no longer lives in Maine. He lives in the south southwest. So, well, that all aside, what are we talking about? I don't know. What do you want to talk about? I'm, I don't know. I'm here. Was there a plan, Gabe? Was there a plan for this, or were we just there was? Gabe's nodding says there was a plan. I'm assuming we didn't just like put you on and give you the deer in the headlights treatment. Was there a topic? What are we talking about? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I can roll, <laughs> I can roll with the punches, whatever. I just got out of class. Like I literally drove home and jumped right into my G- office. Gabe's about to give me notes. Oh, <laughs> we're talking about you as the co-host. Oh, for, okay. Great. Uh... Hey, I'm a co-host. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. No problem. Time. Happy. <laughs> All right. So that's right. That's what we wanted to talk about last time. Uh, you coming on and, and, helping out and co-hosting with the Thursday episodes. And uh, you want to talk about how that happened and what you thought about that? And yeah, sure. Et cetera? Absolutely. Uh, so I have been a listener of whistle kick for about three, two years, two or two or three years. I think. Is that um, all? Yeah. Yeah. It really is. It, feel, it feels I, longer. When, when did we have coffee? It, it was, it was two, two to three years ago. Cause I've only been to one, whistle kick free training day okay. so it was a couple couple of years ago uh i became a listener and a, a lover of whistle kick and when you jeremy came out with your patreon um i immediately in fact i want to say i was if i wasn't the first patreon subscriber i was the second because they happened you told me they happened two people right one after the other and i it was important to me to be a subscriber and to help pay for the content because I spend so much time in my car. Mm -hmm. And when I'm driving literally thousands of miles a month in my car, podcasts are what keep me alive. I say that jokingly, but it's true. I listen to podcasts. I get it. And to me, that was a small price to pay for the content that you were providing. So I became a Patreon subscriber right away. And you got you had sent out a a message to the Patreon subscribers as one of our perks, um, a message that you were considering having a co-host on your episodes for your, uh, a couple Thursdays a month. And I sent an email saying, I'm sure you have a ton of people that would be willing to do this. And I strongly still believe that I bet there are a ton of people that would be willing to be your co-host. And so I was asking you to consider having me as someone if you thought I would be a good fit. And we set up a a, a phone call, which, you know, we've done before, but we set up another, because I was already involved with WhistleClick through the Facebook page. So we had a phone call and chatted about what your thoughts were with this endeavor and and how to move forward with it. And um, I thought you said it absolutely best in your last Patreon note. Uh, and if you're not a Patreon subscriber, you're missing out on some really cool content. But one of the things you said was having me on is like the difference between shadow boxing and actually sparring, having someone to verbally throw ideas off of and have a back and forth is hugely different than just doing it by yourself. And I've never done it by myself, but I could totally see that being the case. And I thought that was a great way to describe it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I've spent the last five years on the Thursday episodes trying to imagine what it's like listening and be, and creating a conversation, right? Because the thing that makes podcasting intriguing is that it allows you to feel like you're part of conversation that you wouldn't otherwise be part of. Think about the shows that are think, – think of the number one rated sh- or, or the number one listened to show. It's Joe Rogan. You get to listen to Joe Rogan talk to other people. And you get the sense that he's having the type of conversation with them that he might have if there were no cameras and audio equipment. Over a beer. Exactly. Yep. And I've tried to artificially construct that solo. And I'd say I've done an okay job. People listen to them, so I'm not doing a terrible job. But but having you as part of it makes it that much more interesting I'm assuming for the listeners. So uh, we got some, some comments coming in on the chat. People are, are saying, yes, they like it. So yay. Now we, we could be, you know, could be a bad sample set 
you know, we might watch numbers plummet. And uh, but uh, no, I can't. In which case, in which case, I'll be I'll gladly step yeah. down, and you can find someone better. <laughs> so I'm going to share something quick with you before I let you go, and we move on to the next thing. Um, so I got an email today. Now, n- nobody, one person, and I don't think Lessie is on here. So Lessie knows all the details because Lessie needs to know all the details. <laughs> a former guest reached out to me today via email. Former guest is uh, prominent in a non-martial arts thing. Very prominent. Person who emailed as a past guest. Person says, I, I'm i considering, I, I think I'd like to do a podcast that intersects this other world of mine and martial arts and talk to other people who also have that intersection. Some of these people would be names that would be household names. And they have invited me to be to, to be involved in this. We have a call. Looks like we're going to have a call on Friday. So uh, this could be really big. This could be really big. So breaking that news here and, and to you and by extension, everyone watching and listening. Cool. So That's great. Yeah. I'll, I'll let you know more off air. All Sounds right. great, Jeremy. So thanks for coming on. And I will talk to you again soon. And I appreciate all you do. Absolutely. I'm all, as I continue to say and will continue to say, I'm happy to help. Thank you. Means a lot. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Peace. All right, Gabe, kick him out. <laughs> oh. I'm just gonna stay here. Oh, you 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 close you closed it. You closed it. That's right. I'll fix it. Here we go. We're back going. All right. Now what? What are we doing now? So we talked to Andrew. Oh, we're doing trivia. I'm I'm told I'm I'm being told there's a rapid fire trivia that is happening, and uh, and I don't know if that's uh, it's not what we're doing right now. All right, Mr. Miyagi had wax on, wax off, sand the floor, paint the fence, and paint the house. Mr. Han, Karate Kid, in 2010, had jacket on, jacket off. What drills have you seen or done that are like these? Hmm. I'm trying to think if I've been taught any of these. Most of the blocks have something that you can imagine. And depending on the, um, the style of martial arts we're talking about, you know, it's, it, it varies a little bit. Um, if, you want, if you want to type to me, use, use that. Oh, that's not what you're doing. Okay, never mind. You, you're, you're a step ahead of me. See, I, at this point in the game, I really shouldn't be second guessing Gabe. He knows what he's doing, uh, but I'm trying to be helpful and just making it more complicated than it needs to be. Oh, we've got our, our, uh, we've got our flow here. All right, so I don't have anything great, but some of the other people have some stuff. Matt says, "Serve the pizza." I assume that's this. I assume that's that's uh, what you might call a chicken wrist or bent wrist block. Look at the mirror, right? Which is kind of an inside block. Um, stir stir the pot. Hmm. How are we stirring the pot, Matt? How are we stirring the pot, Matt? I want I want more context. Matt's in the chat. Uh, It's been over 15 years. I can't remember all the names. We used to name all the kids self-defense like that instead of the by the grab to help them. Jason says, oh, there are so many. My wife used pizza stop sign to teach guarding block with knife hand. Uh, Guarding block with knife hand. Is that this? Something like this? Or maybe this? Could be shuto or sudomaki. Sudomaki. Um, one that comes to mind that I often use was stop and chop for a wrist grab counter and strike. That one I can't visualize. I recall when we had a martial artist in residence from China, he started off his tour by teaching us an eagle claw form. And when teaching one of the eagle postures, he said, be an eagle, don't be a chicken. I like that. 
Um, Andrew was in the chat saying, middle of Heian Sandan, cheerleader stance, hands on hips, feet together. Uh, in Taekwondo, I learned that is arrogant man stance. If you could go back to your most, oh, we did that one. If you could go back to your most difficult time in your training, what would you tell yourself? Well, I shared my answer. What did others say? Matt says there's always a silver lining. Do you think you would have believed it or would have changed anything? Uh, that's Gabe's question. There we go. Uh, Matt says, I don't know. Probably I was always hopeful then. I have a heart problem. Boss found out, lost my school. It took me two years to get cleared from a doctor to train and teach again. In that time, I got to train in multiple other styles and with different instructors and added it to what I teach now. Got to train amateur fighters. It built me so much as a martial artist. We tend to get so frustrated or sad or angry or whatever about things not going the way we want them to or the way we expect them to. And we tend to think that it's bad until we get down the road. How many people do you talk to that say, you know, I wish these big things in my past hadn't happened? Most of the time, at least when you talk to successful people, they've used those stones that were thrown at them to build a road, if you want to make an analogy out of it. I think there are some, there are some things that have happened in my life that have been utterly terrible, things that I won't even talk about publicly. Every one of them has served me in some way and made me a better person. And if I could go back and change them, I would not because I would not be who I am and I am proud and happy of who I am. Gabe's response, uh, go to a chiro, Jenny is saying, sorry. Jenny is saying, go to a chiropractor. Training isn't supposed to hurt that much for that long. Injuries don't always resolve and heal on their own as much as we wish they would. Yeah, there's a stubbornness that tends to happen in our teens and 20s with our training that, you know, just, I'll tough it out. I'll get better. Mm. So I think it was last month, Gabe managed to dig up the, you know, you're a martial artist if, the first 10. Uh, and I mentioned that there were 10 more that I did. These are kind of uh, Jeff Foxworthy inspired. Oh, I want to put everyone to, to notice the picture in picture that we have done. We paid extra for the software to make this happen so you can see me read. You get to watch me read. I mean, what, what's better than that? How great is that? You still, you, know, you still know you're a martial artist if you've ever described something in your car by naming one of the Ninja Turtles. People have stopped asking you about the bruises on your arms and legs. Number three. And by the way, these are all real for me. You can identify certain people by the smell of their sweat. Blah. Number four, your friends get you to go to movies by telling you there's a great fight scene. You sort your laundry into light, dark, and training uniforms. For a while for me, it was just uniforms and non. Number six, you've been asked to leave somewhere for not wearing shoes. That still happens to me. <laughs> Number seven, you became best friends with someone after they intentionally kicked you in the head. Ever make a friend at a tournament? Number eight, you've practiced kicking while walking with crutches. Number nine, your significant other always gives you the seat with your back to the wall. We talked about that today. Did we talk about that on First Cup? I think we talked. I talked about that today. I think it was First Cup. It could have also been my episode with Andrew. I don't remember. This is the problem with doing so much content in a day. It starts to blur together. Oh, by the way, I'm writing a book, uh, a fiction book, trilogy. Number 10, your wedding registry was the Asian world of martial arts. <laughs> I miss writing this stuff. These were fun. You know what started the first one? I think I mentioned it last month. It was the punch a bee one. You might be a martial artist if you've ever punched a bee. Also the only one that people have ever complained about. Why would you punch a bee? Uh, uh. <laughs> yes, Gabe, that 100%. Can you show that? That I totally thought that was. I, when you put that up, I hadn't read the caption yet, and my initial reaction was, oh, look, Gabe's making Tunfa at a PVC. No, it's a door stopper. Uh, 
I mean, the, the handle's a little long, but I don't quite know the scale, so maybe it's just a short Tunfa. I could still, I could still do some damage with that. It would work. <laughs> oh. We have fun. Martial arts is fun. You got to have fun doing it. Story time with Matt. We got two stories today. I love that you do these, Matt. Thank you. All right, let's do them. When learning how to defend against a front double choke for self-defense, my instructor grabbed me and asked what she thinks I should do. I said, I don't know. I'm assuming you said, I don't know, and not IDK, which is what's written here. <laughs> Matt, if you're talking like in text speak, I'm going to slap you. I said, IDK, so she put a little pressure. I started laughing. She swung her hand back and slapped me across the face. <laughs> what is wrong with you? I replied, but you let go. <laughs> oh. I am sure there are so many stories like that about me as a kid. I, I just, yeah, I'm sure there are tons of them. That's a really good one. Hey, whatever you've got to do to get people to let go. You know you know what? You know one of my favorite non-lethal self-defense moves? Lick your hand and then try to touch somebody. Suddenly the person who was trying to cause you harm is going to pull back like, Ew! Yeah, if you can out crazy the mugger, you got a good shot. All right, we got another one here. My son was learning to become an instructor. He's running self-defense. One of the parts included a kick to the groin. A student asked, what's a groin? My son, unprepared, said, I was not trained for this. One of the parents jumped in and helped explain it. <laughs> That's amazing. That's the funniest thing I've heard all day. I love it. We could do an entire channel of ridiculous things kids say in martial arts classes. Oh, and welcome back, Justin Lee Ford. He's in Zoom. I got him. Where is he? There he is. Here's a guy I have not talked to today yet. Ha ha. There he is. Hey! Hey, what's going on, Justin? How are you, man? Doing pretty good. Yourself? Welcome. I'm I'm great. Welcome back to the show. Welcome to the show for the first time with audio. <laughs> <laughs> the audio is a very nice touch. I'm just gonna say. Thank you. Thank you. Your camera's bouncing around, man. Are you holding it? Oh, uh, let me move around a little bit. Stabilize the table. Here we go. Stabilize right. the <laughs> table. What are you doing? Your your table missing a leg? Well, you know, martial arts, we snap the kicks out and mess with the leg. It's a good point. It's a good point. We got to get you a table with some metal legs that are some less destructive feet. Well, that would also be nice. <laughs> um, yeah. What's going on? Oh, uh, how are things much. going down in in Georgia? Right? You're in yes, Georgia. Correct. Yeah. Georgia. Everything's going pretty well. Good. Uh, you know, we are man. Things are going incredible with the school. Nice. Um, you know, we've we've grown up to almost sixty members. That's been sixty six zero. Six zero, right? From from opening up about four and a half weeks ago. With with zero? With zero. Or yeah. Zero to literally zero to sixty. Zero to sixty. Zero to sixty in, in, zero in a month. And wow. in a pandemic. And nonetheless. And that's wow. been with doing a massive amount of digital advertising, okay. uh, talking to businesses in the areas. Uh, we're located just below an apartment complex, so we're getting a lot of, of walking traffic. Nice. Yeah. Location, location, location. Location, location, yeah. location. <laughs> now, last time when we sort of brought you on, my in, my intent was to have you talk about some of this, but Gabe told me that you you had something that you wanted to talk about instead around culture. Uh, more or less, yes. Yeah. So, but so you know, I, I think we can all understand that every martial arts school has a culture unto its own. Anybody who's traveled, especially go from school to school within the same, not just style, but system, you know, maybe they've got the same overarching instructor and some of their students have schools and you go from one to the other, same curriculum, same, 
same lineage can be yes. dramatically different. And it can be good or it can be bad, but I would imagine that it can also be leveraged in a certain way to to the benefit of the school and the students. So absolutely. what do you know about culture? <laughs> I like to think I'm a cultured young man. You but... are a cultured young man. <laughs> you hang out with us. This is true. This is true. No, uh, you're absolutely spot on in talking about uh, how important that can be, right? Because having a good uh, a culture can be a very good thing or a very bad thing, depending and, on and, how. And, it goes. and I want to chime in because apparently I, I'm I'm steering you slightly in the wrong direction, and you're probably we're going to get there, but I want to make sure that I'm yes. not steering you completely wrong. Gabe saying how to build a community of future black belts. Yes, thank you, Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. Well. Yes. All right. So here's the thing about uh, the culture of the school, the environment of the school. You know, it, it's very easy to quit a commitment, mm. right? It's tough to quit a relationship. Oh. Right? You know, think about how many people oh. open up a gym membership. Or, yeah, you see, I love the people. way you put that. Right? So you think of how many people open up a, a gym membership on January 1st and think about how many gym memberships are actually being used come the end of January. Yeah. Yeah, but that's totally. a, that's that's a commitment, but a relationship, that's a little different. That's a little bit tougher to quit on. So when I'm working with a martial arts school, there's two dynamics I'm really focusing on. One is the staff to student dynamic, understanding that relationship. Mm -hmm. The other one is the student to student relationship and that dynamic. And at first it might seem like we have nothing to do with the second one. We do. There are some things we can do, right? Okay. Um, so uh, let's delve into the first one, I suppose. And whenever I'm talking about student, of course, that's not just a child or an adult. That's really their entire family, mm. especially if it's for a child. So, uh, yeah, let's let's delve into that topic. All I, right, uh, all right. Tell me, tell me I'm, about it. How how do how do you, or how does a school make an impact on the relationship with the student, yeah. the, the staff to student relationship? That's the one you're going first. Correct. Yes. All right. So St staff let's, to student relationship. Tell us let's about do it. it. This, is, this is how I'm going from zero to 60 students in a little over a month. Right. So the first thing is trust, hmm. right? That sounds broad. That sounds almost general, but they need to know, here's the key phrase. We're on the same team, hmm. right? Because it's so easy, especially after the uh, students, maybe first private lesson where uh, maybe you start talking about membership options and pricing for you and the, the student to seem like you're on different teams, yep. right? You're on the same team. Yep. Okay. You, you're the, the, the person trying to uh, sign up. They're the driver, I'm the GPS. I'm just there helping them guide the decision to what's gonna help them best, okay? So communicating your honesty, communicating your values, that's important day one. They need to know that, again, they can trust you. Um, I, I, I delve into my background a little bit with this because uh, oh man, this got me started in the martial arts as a teacher. My grandparents ran a foster home oh. and they took care of, get this, 150 kids. Simultaneously? Yeah. Not simultaneously. Oh, okay. At the max, you'd have maybe like 15 to 20 kids for that's, Christmas. That's, that's, still, still that's still a lot of kids, man. <laughs> and wow. so I, I communicate that to a lot of the people that come in as well okay. because I want them to know hey, when I became a teacher, this became my goal. Mm. I wanted to impact 150 lives similar to my grandparents. Mm. That's why I'm here in front of you as an instructor trying to share these life lessons with you and your child, right? And so it's about communicating that and making sure they comprehend that, okay? Yep. The, the next thing is perceived indifference and getting rid of that. Okay. It, it's very easy to seem like the instructor that doesn't care. You communicate your values and how honest you are, but think of the instructor that just gets them signed up and then comes uh, to teach their class and is just yelling out numbers. One, two, throw your kick. They show then, up two minutes before class starts. Mm -hmm. They end like immediately on time and they're off uh -huh. the floor as quickly as possible. Exactly. It's right? a job. It's, mm -hmm. it's a job, right? And that, that, doesn't communicate that you care for the students individually sure. and collectively. You got to communicate that. You got to make sure they comprehend that as well. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm going to keep it brief and just touch on those two. Well, let's switch over to uh, student-student dynamic. Okay. So the biggest thing, well, here's the biggest few. Uh, One's getting get-togethers, finding the time for them to get some shared experiences and events that they can collect with. I've been screaming this from the rooftop for years, (laughs) and I don't, nobody seems to listen. I don't get it. Right? I, it, it's a powerful thing. It's an absolutely powerful thing. I can't tell you how many times uh, just going to a dinner with some Kung Fu buddies would just change my, my whole day, right? Uh, you ever have an experience where the training partner you like dislike the most and you socialize with them and you're like, oh, now I like this person and I'm conflicted? Best friends now, right? Yeah. It's exactly that. So you got to give them the opportunity. Now for kids, it's a similar thing. You might not gather them all together for dinner, but you you can offer things like parents' night outs, right? Uh, I'm sure a lot of school owners know that term, but basically a a party at the school, right? You keep the kids at the school, show them a movie, put out some pizza or whatever else, play some games, have a fun time together. Maybe they bring their friends, they make new friends together, right? Um, The other thing would be teams. That's another important thing I touch on. Having it put out there that there are people around you that are similar to you, or at least have interests similar to you. Hey, you're interested in becoming an instructor like me. We're on the instructor training team. Hey, you're interested in performing and demonstrating like me. We've got the the action team, the demonstration team Mm. uniform. Ah, cool. We're in this together. I Uh, like that. It's a great way of combating the the leakage that pops out, oh, I'm going to leave martial arts to go do soccer and I'll come back when I'm done, especially when you hit that adolescent age because Mm -hmm. team dynamics and finding where you fit socially is so important to kids. Exactly. So you can do some of that Mm -hmm. within. I like it. You know, I I think we've got a whole episode here (laughs) and, um, and I think you got a book in there. And I think we got to talk about both. Um, but before I let you go, what's the other thing that we're working on together? Ooh, we've talked about a good few things. So which one do you want to touch on? The, you want to touch on the, the big project? Just, yeah, the big project. Just just give them, a, give them a little bit of the top down. Oh, I'm trying to be a little careful of the details. Uh, you and I got this project, a, um, a written project that we're bringing to many people. Uh, yep. I think of how specific you want to go into this. We're working on a magazine. There we go. All right. I, you just, I'll say I'm, it. I can well, say I, it. You can say it. We're working on a magazine and I owe you an email. You emailed me. Yes, that, that is moving forward. So, uh, stay tuned because gonna we're going to crush this. <laughs> Thanks oh, for yeah. coming on. I got to talk, I'll talk to you again soon. We got to, we got to move on to the next segment. Thank you for having me. Have a wonderful day, all right? Thanks, man. You too. All right, bye. Bye. All right. Wow. This has been so much fun. We've got like 10 minutes left, but I'm curious what people think, right? So just at some point, let me know what you guys think about what we're doing. Gabe and I talk after each show what do we do? What do we change? What do we add? How do we improve? And one of the big things that we've been working on is bringing, bringing guests on. I want to give a big shout out to Matt, Matt Nather for his contributions to Whistlekick Live. He submitted a couple of picks in addition to the stories that he gave us earlier, gave us a couple picks of what his life looks like right now. Ah, that's a baby. That's a baby in a stick. That's adorable. That's a baby with foam nunchaku. Also adorable. Is it the two? Okay. Just, I feel like I saw one of those come through and and they just they they made my day. You know, there's there's nothing cuter than a martial arts baby. All right. So, um, rapid fire trivia coming up and Gabe's giving me a note. 
do you, do you no? Okay, he's not giving me a note. Hold on. I have 60 seconds to answer as many of the 30 questions as possible. Read the question out loud before giving my answer. Plus two seconds to give me time to get to the slideshow. All right, I'm going to read fast then. Whew. Okay, <clears throat> let's do it. I can read pretty quickly. Oh, he's setting the timer. Do you want me to do it? Here, I got it. All right, are you ready? Not yet. Here, let me move this. Here, I'll put it right here. Okay, as soon as you hit the... I'll, I'll hit the, I'll... You hit go and then I'll, I'll and then I'll, I'll start the timer while I'm reading. All right, how old were you when you started training? Four. What's the first color of whistle kick gear produced? Black. What was karate called before it was karate? Tay. Who was Pat Morita's stuntman and the karate kid? Uh, uh, Fumio Demura. Which Ninja Turtle carries a bow? Donatello. What year was the karate kid released? 1983. What year did Bruce Lee die? 1970. What famous martial arts actor is also a professional bowler? Ugh. Uh, I don't know. In TMNT, who is the leader of the Foot Clan? Uh, uh, Shredder. Which state has the most martial arts schools per capita? Florida. What was the first martial art in the ancient Olympics? Wrestling. What was the first martial art in the modern Olympics? Wrestling. Who developed belt system used today? Jigoro Kano. What was Bruce Lee's last movie as an actor? Uh, depends on whether you're talking about when it was recorded or when it was released. I think Game of Death was the one that came out last. Bruce Lee's first instructor, uh, It Man. What style did Bruce Lee first study? Wing Chun. What art came first, judo or jujitsu? Jujitsu. Judo was a response because all the jujitsu practitioners were dying in competition. What style is Bruce Lee most famous for creating? Jeet Kune Do. We're out of time, like a while ago. I don't know when it ended. I wasn't watching. I was watching the questions over here. How many did I, how far did I get? We don't know. We don't know how many I got. Richard says, well done in the chat. That's all right. Somebody can score it later. That was fun. I got a little more got through a little more than half of them but who knows how much time there was. All right, so here are the answers. So can can you show that? I want to see that. Okay, hold on. You asked me a question about my history and and you have and you have the answer on the answer key like I was going to get it wrong. <laughs> All right. Yes, yes. Karate was 2D. I don't I didn't know that. Uh, Karate Kid was 84. Okay, I was wrong. Bruce Lee died in 73. I was wrong. Jackie Chan's a pro bowler. I didn't know that. Shred Rhode Island. Mississippi has the least. Who wants to open schools in Mississippi? Let's go. Wrestling. Oh, judo in the modern Olympics. Okay. Kano. Game of Death. I got that right. Ip Man. Wing Chun. Jiu Jitsu. Jeet Kune Do. All right. And that's where we ended. We ended at 18. So uh, I'm seeing 19 and 20. So maybe we can do this next time. That was a lot of fun. That was fun. Well done. Well done, Gabe. See, this this is the experimentation. This is the playing around and the feedback coming through in the chat is that people had a lot of fun with that as well. So we will do that again, maybe. I don't know. It's up to Gabe. Gabe does all the work. I just show up. Maybe not all the work, but the majority of it. He does a great job. All right. Is this a good place for us to wind down? Okay. I'm getting a yes. All right. So reminder. These sweatpants. If you don't know what to get someone, buy them these sweatpants. If you love them, buy them these sweatpants. If you love yourself, but 
buy yourself some sweatpants. Go to whistlekick.com. It's a pre-order. We are not going to have extras. Um, so order them. If you need help with sizing, ask me. Uh, black and dark and navy. And then if you own pets, this gray or lighter gray. Lighter gray shows coffee stains. This is my preferred color. If you don't have pets, get the black. The navy's great too. The light gray is great as well. But this is like the best balance. It's like all of your stains in a color. So you don't notice them. Because if you're going to lounge around in sweatpants, you're going to get coffee on them. Go to whistlekick.com. They're featured right on the homepage. You can see them there. Uh, Andrew's in the chat reminding everyone that subscribing to the Patreon is a good idea. Uh, we, we really try. So let me, let me just say this. I work really hard. We all work really hard as a team to make sure that the content that we put out grossly exceeds what you pay for it. So what are you paying for this? Nothing. You're, you're spending your time. You hopefully you derive as enough value to warrant putting in the time. When you buy sweatpants or gear or whatever, hopefully you feel like you get more than your money's worth. The Patreon is more of the same. If you're willing to throw in money and it starts at two bucks a month, you get more stuff. You get behind the scenes, you get exclusive audio, video, book drafts, um, program drafts. People in the $25 tier in the last six months have probably received uh, at least $100 worth of books and programs. Because if you give me, I'm going to give you back. Because that's just, that's just how I was raised. This one came a week late sort of because of the election. So we will be back in December with the first Tuesday of the month. What is that? December. I'm going to check my calendar. It's December 1st. I'll see you all December 1st. If you are listening to this, please consider coming to watch 8 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time on Facebook. Look for the next episode event to come out soon. Uh, we do have a Facebook event. A lot of the questions that were asked that we gave you answers for today, the, the conversation topics, Gabe's throwing that stuff in there. So if you want to be involved, that's the best way to do it. The other things we got going on, Martial Arts Radio, Martial Journal, First Cup, and I'm writing a book. And my goal is to have that book written for Christmas. And we're going to have two new guests for the next episode. And we don't know who they are yet. But we'll figure it out. Because that's what we do. So, thank you again, everyone. I appreciate you being here. Oh, apparently we do have them. Yeah. Oh, we, we've confirmed those? All right. We've got Jared and Richard coming on next time. So, Jared, Jared Wilson, Sensei Jared Wilson, host of Martial Thoughts, longtime friend, great guy. And Richard Baitlick. He's been on the show too and knows martial arts history like nobody else. So thank you to them. Thank you to you. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Peace.